Suga 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 Jabu and the Lion There once was a young herd boy in Zululand named Jabu. He took great pride in the way in which he cared for his father's cattle. And his father had many cows, over 25. It was quite a task to keep these naughty creatures out of trouble, away from the farmer's mealies and out of the dangerous roads. Most of Jabu's friends also kept their father's cattle, but none of them had even half the herd Jabu did. And not one of them was as good a herd boy as Jabu. It was a sign of Jabu's father's pride in his boy that he entrusted such a large herd to such a young boy. One day, as he sat atop a small copy, watching the animals feed and braiding long thin strips of grass into bangles for his sisters, Jabu's friend Sipo came running to him. Have you heard the news, my friend? panted Sipo. Before Jabu could even answer, Sipo rushed on to tell him. Bubes, the lion, has been seen in these parts. Last night, Bubes attacked and killed one of Tabu's father's cows. The men of the village are already setting traps for the beast. Jabu wasn't surprised by the news. His keen eyes had seen the spoor of the lion. His leftover kill, his prints here and there in the soft earth, his dung. Jabu had respect for the king of the beasts. And since Bubes's pattern was to hunt at night when the cattle were safely within the kraal, Jabu had seen no reason to alert the village of Bubes's presence. But the killing of a cow! I wonder, thought Jabu to himself, if the cow was not left out of the kraal. Tabu was known to be a sloppy herd boy, a fellow who ran with his head in the clouds. He had been known to forget a cow or two outside before. Wozangane, come friend, Sipo urged. Put your herd away for the day and watch with me as the men set the traps. Jabu slowly shook his head as he looked at Sipo and smiled. You know me, friend. I cannot put the cattle back into the kraal so early in the day. They need to be driven to the river before they go home. Sipo smiled. I thought you'd say that, but I wanted to tell you anyway. See you later, my friend, perhaps by the fire tonight. And Sipo ran quickly towards the village. Jabu began to gather the cattle together. He waved his intonga and gave a loud whistle. Each cow looked up, then after a moment's pause, slowly started to trudge toward Jabu. With a grin, Jabu began to take them to the water. There he bathed his feet in the cool, refreshing river as the cows drank their fill. It was a fine, sunny autumn day, and if his mind had not been so busy thinking about the lion and the traps the men were setting, Jabba would probably be shaping the soft river clay into small cow figurines for his little brother. Then Jabu heard a sound that stole his breath from him. <coughs> came the bellow. The cattle froze, a wild look coming into their eyes. It was Bubes, and he was near. There was no time to drive the animals home. The lion was much too close. Jabu slowly stood up, looking carefully around. He walked purposefully, trying not to show the fear that made his knees tremble, and pulled the cattle together in a tight circle. The cows trusted him, and they obeyed. <coughs> Jabu listened. Bubes was not declaring his majesty or might. It sounded more like a cry for help. Several more bellows, and Jabu knew. Bubes was in trouble. Somehow this took most of the boys' fear from him. Gripping his staff, Jabu quietly began to walk towards the lion's cry. Yes, indeed, the lion was in trouble. Jabu found him in a small clearing several meters across the river. He was caught in one of the traps laid by the men of the village. His head was firmly wedged in the barred structure, and the more he struggled, the tighter the snare became. 
Jabu stood and stared. Never before had he seen the king of the animals so near. It truly was a majestic animal, and a large part of his heart was sore for the creature. Then the lion saw the boy. Oh, Mfana, it is good to see that you are here. Please help me. I am caught in this stupid trap and I cannot free myself. Please, please, will you come and pull up on the bar that is holding my head? Please. Jabu had a tender heart, but he was no fool. I would very much like to free you, Bubes, but I'm afraid that as soon as I do, you would make me your dinner. Oh no, Nganwan. My friend, I could never eat someone who set me free. I promise, I really promise with full sincerity that I will not touch a hair on your head. Well, the lion begged and pleaded so pitifully that Jabu finally decided to trust him and set him free. Gingerly, he stepped over the trap and raised the bar that held the lion's head. With a mighty bound, the lion leapt free of the trap and shook his mane. Oh, thank you, Mfana. I really owe you something. Oh, my neck was getting so stiff in there. I fear it would have been parted from my body by the hunters if you hadn't come along. Now, please, if you don't mind, Mfana, one last thing. I have become so thirsty from being in that thing, I would really like a drink of water. Can you show me where the river is? I seem to have become confused with my directions. Jabu agreed, keeping a wary eye on the lion, and led the lion upstream from where he had come, away from his father's cows, since Bubes had made no promise about not eating them. As the lion drank, he watched Jabu with one eye. He was thinking to himself, mm, Nice-looking legs on that boy. And those arms are good-looking too. Pity to waste such an excellent meal. When the lion raised his head from the river, both his eyes were on Jabu. And this time, the boy could see exactly what was reflected there. Jabu began to back up. You promised, Bubes, Jabu began. I saved you from the hunters, and you promised not to eat me. Yes, said Bubes, slowly walking toward the retreating boy. You are right. I did make that promise. But somehow, now that I'm free, it does not seem so important to keep that promise. And I'm Awfully hungry. You're making a big mistake, said Jabu. Don't you know that if you break your promises, the pieces of the broken promises will come back to cut you? The lion stopped and laughed. <laughs> what nonsense! <laughs> How can such a flimsy thing cut me? I am more determined than ever to eat you now, boy and he started stalking Jabu once more. All this talk is just making me hungrier. Just then, an old donkey happened across their path. Ask the donkey, said Jabu to the lion. Ask him, and he will tell you how bad it is to break a promise. Eh, <sighs> Wena, you're certainly dragging this thing out. All right, I'll ask the donkey. The lion turned to the old creature. I want to eat this boy. He addressed the donkey. Isn't that okay? Jabu broke in. But he promised to let me go after I freed him from the snare. The donkey slowly looked at the lion. And then at Jabu. I say, the donkey started, that all my life these stupid humans have beaten me and forced me to carry things. Now that I am old... They turn me out and leave me to waste away all alone. I do not like humans. He turned back to the lion. Eat the boy. And the donkey moved on. Well, that settles that, 
said the lion, as he began to approach the boy once more. Just then, Mpungushe the jackal stepped between the two. Oh, <laughs> terribly sorry, he said, to have disturbed you. I'll be on my way. No, shouted Jabu. Wait and tell the lion how bad it is to break a promise. A promise? asked the jackal. Well, I suppose it depends upon the promise, doesn't it? Why, did one of you make a promise? Lion sat down and rolled his eyes upwards toward the heavens. Yes, Jabu said, and he told the jackal how he had freed the lion from the trap and how Lion had promised not to eat him, and how now Lion was intent upon doing that very thing. <laughs> and what a silly story, <laughs> said Jackal. Mine Corsi, the king of all the animals, stuck in a little trap made by humans. <laughs> Impossible, I don't believe it. It is true, said Bubes. It was a strong and terrible trap. Oh, I can't believe anything is stronger than my king. I must see this thing. Please, will you take the courtesy before your dinner, your majesty, to show me this trap that you are speaking about? Please. Then you can eat your meal in peace. So the lion, keeping Jabu in front of himself, led Jackal to the trap. But you can't tell me that this little thing could actually hold your head. <laughs> Never. I just can't imagine it. Gorsi, would you mind just sticking your head in there so that I can see how you looked when the boy found you? Oh, now you are annoying me with all your questions. This is the last thing I will do, and then you must be on your way and leave me to eat my dinner in peace. So Lion stuck his head back between the bars, just the way it was when Jabu had found him. Then, quicker than lightning, Jackal threw the top bar in place. Lion was caught fast once again. <laughs> yes, said Jackal. Now I see how you were trapped. <laughs> what a pity that you are trapped once more. But the boy is right, Gorsi. Broken promises always catch up with you. Lion roared in anger, but the sound trap held him well. Jabu thanked the jackal and ran back to his cows, who were all waiting patiently for his return. Jabu drove them home and into the kraal. Boy, what a day he had had! Jabu! Jabu! Sipo came running up from behind Jabu. The lion's been caught in the trap near the river. You and your cattle missed all the adventure. Jabu turned and smiled at his friend and said, Sipo, we've had all the adventure we need for one day. And as Sipo headed back to the hunters to hear the story once again of the mighty lion caught in the trap, Jabu greeted his mother in the cooking house and sat down with a sigh.